First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Good evening and welcome to WUFT News First at Five. I'm Alexis Clevenger. And I'm Kennedy Mason. Thanks for joining us. Well, you can always count on Florida for some unpredictable showers. Now, we saw how the rain delayed the Artemis launch several times. And with NASA planning for takeoff in a few hours, we have our fingers crossed for clear skies. WUFT's Dara Getter joins us with the weather forecast. And Dara, do you think the launch will get rained on yet again? Well, Kennedy, the rain that we're tracking at the time of the launch isn't as locally widespread as what we saw earlier today, so things are looking pretty good for the launch. Right now, we're pretty dry, but earlier at one point, our radar was entirely covered in rain as large bands and clusters swept through our area. You can see the remnants of that outside on your campus cam, a little bit of blue and some sunshine trying to peek through that overcast there. It feels like 73 out temperatures in the low 70s right now. Over the next couple of hours, we're not going to see a huge difference in temperature. Our high tonight is going to be in the low 60s, but we do have several chances for rain going into early Wednesday morning. I'll have more on that as well as the colder temperatures the cold front is bringing coming up in my full forecast. Back to you. Thanks, Dara. And after months of delays, we're finally just hours away from NASA's Artemis 1 launch, the rocket that could pave the way for astronauts to return to the moon. That's right, Alexis. We're hoping for this first mission to be successful. But WUFT's Jacob Zadesi joins us live now from the Kennedy Space Center with what we can expect as NASA prepares this rocket for takeoff. Jacob. Thanks, Kennedy. Yes, I'm live at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, just hours ahead of NASA's third attempt to begin the Artemis program with the Artemis 1 mission. Now, on your screen now, you can see a live look at the NASA TV broadcast of the tanking operations, which began just over an hour and a half ago. This is the first step towards making the first launch attempt since Hurricane Ian, when NASA rolled the rocket back into the building to protect it from the elements and only rolled it back out just over a week ago. Now, this launch attempt comes after the controversial decision to leave the mission's SLS rocket and Orion capsule on the pad during Hurricane Nicole, citing a low likelihood of damage from the storm's lower wind speeds. After an investigation, NASA said the rocket only suffered from minor and what they say is inconsequential insulation peeling, and the mission was once again given a go. Now, the mission is currently scheduled with a launch window opening at 1.04 a.m. overnight. So if you want to tune in live, you can watch that on NASA TV. Now, we do know from launch attempts past that that may not always happen, and it's very common for these kinds of things to get scrubbed. If you'd rather follow along with your local public media instead, you can follow along on our social media channels or wuft.org uh, or even wuft.fm with Morning Edition. For now, though, live from the Kennedy Space Center, Jacob Sedesi, WUFT News. Back to you. Thanks, Jacob. Now, Alachua County welcomes commissioners with a swearing-in ceremony. The three county commissioners, Mary Helen Wheeler, Ken Cornell, and Mary Alford, were re-elected to the board. Commissioner Mary Alford says the goals from her campaign remain the same as she regains her seat, affordable housing being her main priority. I can't wait to get back to work to that because it's become very clear that we have a serious, serious housing crisis in Alachua County. District 2 Commissioner Mary Helen Wheeler says she wants to continue to serve the people and the community. Now, the Gainesville City Commission is holding a special meeting to discuss the fate of the four vacant positions. As you can see on screen, these positions include GRU Manager, City Manager, City Attorney, and Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. The four positions are currently being held by interim officers. This means only two of the six county positions are currently being occupied. The selection process began today at 4 p.m. The current city commissioners will be the ones participating in this selection since the newly elected officials do not begin their term until next year. And for our listeners from South Florida, a new airline is looking to open a direct route traveling from Fort Lauderdale to Gainesville. 
Staniel Air will be flying out of Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport, which is about 15 minutes away from Fort Lauderdale's International Airport. The airline will offer flat rates for their flights. A round trip would cost $499 plus taxes, and a one-way will be $264 plus taxes. Airline really representative Kristen time. Doyle mentioned Gainesville's airport does not currently offer a direct flight to Miami. She says travelers will also benefit from the first class service. Your travel time, your stress, it's all taken care of. <laughs> These flights available by the end of the year. They are still trying to figure out the best need for scheduled service and say flights will change based on the season. We're learning more about a shooting at the University of Virginia. Who is responsible? And are they in custody? We'll tell you all those details and more coming up on WUFT News First at Five. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Welcome back. Students at the University of Virginia won't be attending class today, but instead will be mourning the death of their peers. We've been told a former football player shot and killed three other players and left two others wounded. Christopher Jones is in custody, but the community is still coping with the loss of their loved ones. CNN's Joe Johns gives us a closer look from Charlottesville. A shaken campus uniting in grief. The University of Virginia mourning three football players. Two other students were injured after a shooting rocked the school. The shootings occurred on a bus full of students returning from a field trip. Three of the victims did not survive. Gunshots rang out Sunday night, an intense manhunt in and around Charlottesville for the suspect followed. Pardon me. In the middle of a press conference, the news everyone on campus was hoping for. Thank you, Captain. We just received information the suspect is in custody. Police have identified the suspect as University of Virginia student Christopher Darnell Jones, Jr. The 22-year-old was a freshman on the UVA football team in 2018, but did not play in any games. Police said Jones was arrested about 75 miles outside the Charlottesville campus. The university identified the victims as Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Deshaun Perry, all current football players. Officials did not identify the two additional students injured in the incident. The UVA football team expressed its heartbreak in a tweet saying, quote, there are no words to describe this tremendous loss to our UVA football family. Their coach calling them incredible young men with huge aspirations and extremely bright futures. A sentiment of sorrow echoed by the University of Virginia's president. My heart is broken for the victims and their families and for all who those who knew and loved them. The suspect's father told CNN affiliate WTVR he is heartbroken and in disbelief. I don't, I don't know what to say, uh, except I'm sorry uh, on his behalf, uh, and I apologize. Police said the suspect had come to the UVA Police Department's attention before. They said Jones had a prior incident involving a concealed weapon in 2021 outside the city of Charlottesville. UVA's Judicial Council took over the case and the results are pending, according to police. During a press conference yesterday, UVA's police chief also said that in September, a non-student claimed Jones had made a comment about possessing a gun. But to the knowledge of the police, that person never actually saw the gun in question. The victim's families and the suspect's father shaken, now hoping for answers. What happened? Uh, why did it have to get this far? He could have called me. And four students were killed at the University of Idaho over the weekend. Officers responded to a call for an unconscious person near the university. They found four people dead at the scene, all students of the university. 
The Moscow Police Department is investigating the incident. Classes for the University of Idaho were canceled on Monday, but students are still in shock. Lives were lost before they basically even started in college. It's just so heartbreaking to know and to realize that they were in their 20s and this is the end for them and they should have had long, long lives beyond this. A pre-trial date is set for January 13th, 2023 and a trial date is slated for March 20th, 2023. Ukrainian President, President Volodymyr Zelensky presented a proposal for peace at the G20 summit today, offering a pathway to ending the Russian invasion. His proposal came as Russia launched new rounds of missile strikes across the country, primarily targeting energy infrastructure. Meanwhile, parts of Ukraine are celebrating liberation from Russian forces, but the end of conflict so far remains out of sight. Chris Wynn is in Washington with the latest. As air raid sirens ring across Ukraine, there are reports that two missiles or rockets struck Poland near the Ukrainian border, killing at least two people. It's unclear from where the projectiles originated, but they landed at roughly the same time as a Russian missile strike on western Ukraine. The incident occurring after Ukrainians were warned to expect more attacks from Russia. Mostly in energy infrastructure. We can see what the enemy wants. They will not succeed. Russian missiles struck about a dozen Ukrainian cities and districts on Tuesday, marking the largest wave of attacks on the country this month following several devastating rounds in October. Senior Ukrainian officials say at least half of the customers in Kyiv have no electricity after Russian strikes forced emergency outages. The attacks come after Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky presented a 10-point peace plan to end Russia's invasion in a video speech to G20 leaders. We will not allow Russia to wait it out, build up its forces, and then start a new series of terror and global destabilization. The steps include a path to nuclear safety, food security, and a special tribunal for alleged Russian war crimes. I am convinced now is the time when the Russian destructive war must and can be stopped. A Kremlin spokesperson says Russia has seen Zelensky's proposal, but doesn't believe the Ukrainian government wants to negotiate in good faith. In Washington, I'm Chris Wynn reporting. A 2024 presidential run could be announced by former President Donald Trump tonight. Writing on his social media platform today, Mr. Trump said, quote, Hopefully today will turn out to be one of the most important days in the history of our country. It would be the former president's third consecutive run for the Oval Office and comes after GOP candidates endorsed by Trump seemingly underperformed in the midterms. The announcement would also come a day after his number two, former Vice President Mike Pence spoke out against him on ABC News. Trump is expected to speak at his Mar-a-Lago club in Palm Beach, Florida at 9 p.m. tonight. Today marks the UN projection for when the world's population is expected to hit 8 billion people, though officials are careful to note it's not a precise milestone. Nigeria is among the eight countries that the UN says will account for more than half the world's population growth between now and 2050, along with Congo, Ethiopia, and Tanzania, among others. Other countries rounding out the list of those contributing most to the population increase are India, Pakistan, and the Philippines. Well, Kennedy, I thought it was going to be cold when I walked out the door this morning. I had my jacket and hand ready to go, but it turns out I didn't need it. I know. It was kind of hot today. It was warm. I'm thinking tomorrow might be some sweater weather. Yes. Let's see. Um, Dara Getter has more on the cold temperatures coming through tomorrow. A passing cold front is bringing bands of rain and scattered showers. Chilly temperatures are going to be moving into our area. You're watching WUFT TV News. You can see those remnants of the passing showers and thunderstorms we saw earlier lingering in the form of some pretty dense cloud cover. You can see a little bit of sunshine peeking through the clouds there. It feels like 73 with temperatures in the low 70s. We saw above average wind speeds today with max wind gusts reaching up to 19 miles per hour in Gainesville. And it also felt more humid outside than normal with our relative humidity at almost 100% this morning. Right now in Gainesville, 
Bristol, we're at 85%. These humid and muggy conditions look like they're going to be lasting today and tomorrow, but we're going to be dipping into pleasant conditions on Thursday, and it's going to finally start to feel refreshing this weekend. Here is the rain that we're tracking moving along with that cold front. It looks like Gainesville on south will be staying pretty dry until that cold front reaches our area overnight going into early Wednesday morning where there will be a chance for a scattered shower or two in Gainesville early Wednesday morning. Over the next couple of hours, we are going to not see a huge difference in temperature as where temperature tonight is going to be in the low 60s, 62 in Gainesville, 50s further north and upper to mid 60s along the east coast and further south. As you wake up tomorrow morning, mostly cloudy skies and as we give time for those rain clouds to clear up, mostly sunny skies in the afternoon, we are going to be left with cooler than average temperatures. Our high tomorrow in the 60s and our low Wednesday night in the 40s, 40s seven in Gainesville, but it's going to feel much cooler than that. The rest of this week below average temperatures in the 60s and 50s, 40s overnight. We are tracking rain moving in this weekend, keeping our temperatures cool the rest of this week. Back to you. Thanks, Dara. The Gator basketball team lost to an in-state rival last night. Yeah, WUFT's D DJ McCaffrey will be back after the break to bring you the highlights. We're back after this. Stay with us. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome to sports. I'm DJ McCaffrey. Gator men's basketball suffered its first loss against the Florida Atlantic Owls last night. For the Gators, Colin Castleton recorded his second 30-point game in a row. He contributed a game-high 30 points and 12 rebounds and shot 44% from the field. For the Owls, Michael Forrest came off the bench and led his team with 20 points. Janelle Davis was picking up what Forrest couldn't put down as he had 10 rebounds and put up 18 points in the effort. A couple of clutch free throws at the end of the game allowed Florida Atlantic to come away with a 76-74 victory. Up next for the Gators, the Gators will travel to Tallahassee to take on the Seminoles on Friday. The Gators football team took care of business in the Swamp against South Carolina on Saturday. They now look ahead to Vanderbilt, which is coming off their first SEC win since 2019 and its first road win since 2018. Now they are set to host the Gators and Florida head coach Billy Napier is speaking highly of the Commodores' recent success of the Vanderbilt prep. This is a group that continues to get better. There's no question year one to year two. Clark's done a great job. You can see the improvement within this season. Um, they've got some young players that continue to get better. Got their first um, SEC win in a while and there's some momentum that we'll have to deal with that goes with that. So tough place to play. Um, you know, a lot of challenges when it comes to going on the road here to win a game. Kickoff in Nashville is set for noon, and a win would guarantee the Gators an above 500 season in their first year under head coach Billy Napier. The third college football playoff poll comes out tonight, and after Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, and TCU were all unbeaten this past weekend, there shouldn't be any movement in the top four. In the 6-15 to 15 range, however, there will be some shakeups as Oregon, Ole Miss, and UCLA were defeated on Saturday. The new rankings will come out at 7 p.m. on ESPN. Thanks, DJ. Now, before we go, let's have one last check on the weather. Let's head over to Dara. After the cold front passes us by tonight, we're going to be left with some pretty chilly temperatures tomorrow. Wednesday high in the 60s and 70s on South 68 in Gainesville. The rest of this week, things are going to be cooling down quite a bit. We'll be seeing temperatures in the 50s and 60s during the day and 40s during the night. We are tracking rain moving in this weekend, which are going to keep our temperatures cool going into next week. Back to you. Thanks, Dara. BBC World News is next, and the PBS News Hour is coming up at 7. But your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org. Have a good night.